my good human, welcome back to my channel. I'm Luana from LuanaRose.com and today I'm dishing all about the function of the adrenal glands. Now, this is not about the technical details, this is about the practical everyday knowledge that you ought to know about your adrenal glands. Most people hear about their kidney or adrenals when it's too late, when they're on the cusp of burnout or the middle of adrenal fatigue or burnout. Those days where no matter what, you just can't get enough rest, feeling exhausted all the time, and eventually adrenal fatigue and burnout leads to chronic illness and serious sickness if you've been experiencing adrenal fatigue and exhaustion for a very long time, such as fibromyalgia and any autoimmune disease are linked with adrenal fatigue. If you've ever taken one of my programs or work with me one-on-one -on -one or in a workshop, you know that I absolutely adore working with the adrenal and kidneys because it's one of the most effective ways to bring on more regulation and a greater capacity and resilience to a human. They basically determine how we process and move through stressors in our life. So when we give them support and learn when they're talking to us, when our body is saying no or hey, slow down or you know, this is safe and comforting, or this is dangerous, then that's learning the language of our nervous system and learning the language of our kidney and adrenals, which is tremendously uh, helpful for you. So that's what I do in my programs and working one-on-one. -on -one. In this video, I'm breaking down the function of the adrenals, a practical everyday function, into three parts. But before we do that, I just want to let you know, I may sound a bit different than normal. I have allergies, it's allergy season where I am, so if I sound more nasally, my voice sounds different, it's 100% accurate, and bear with me through this video. Part one, the function of adrenals in our bodies. Adrenals are part of the endocrine system. The endocrine system is our hormonal system. So they produce and help distribute alongside our brain, parts of our brain, hormones that help regulate our metabolism, our immune system, our sleep-wake cycles, hunger, and our stress response, that fight-flight-freeze-fawn response. The adrenals alongside the brain, such as the hypothalamus and pituitary, if you've ever heard of the HPA axis, it stands for hypothalamus pituitary adrenal, it's this circuitry, like this alarm circuitry like we have in our houses, that responds to our environment, our internal and external environment, to basically tell the rest of our system, is it time to be stressed or have rest and relaxation? So our stress chemicals come in play here. Commonly known stress chemicals are cortisol, adrenaline, aldosterone, and the feel-good chemicals are serotonin for sleeping, oxytocin for bonding, and dopamine and endorphins when we work out or um, hang out with people that we have enjoyable moments with. Both the kidney and adrenals have a direct access to the bloodstream. So this bloodstream, the circulation system, is like a distribution center. So we can think of Amazon, you know, we've all ordered things from Amazon and they have dif distribution centers around the countries, around the world and they distribute the packages. So these hormones are distributed via the brain and kidney and adrenals throughout our system. So it's a very efficient way to send information quickly if we're having a stress response or if we're coming down from stress. The kidney and adrenals are those essentially distribution centers for the bloodstream which carry the hormones throughout our body and this happens in milliseconds and it's not involving thought process. It happens automatically, part of the autonomic nervous system. Part two, the function of the adrenals in a relational aspect, a relational field. Have you ever had that feeling or that thought of, oh, this person wants something from me, they're coming close to me and they need something or they may take my energy or demand something from me. Have you ever felt that before? I know I sure have. Or on the flip side of that, we tend to go between these emotional human experiences and also 
physiological of wanting connection, yearning for it, but also being terrified of getting close to someone and inviting someone into our internal experience of life. So these two kind of opposite experiences are experienced via the body through our adrenal and kidneys. Our adrenal and kidneys are part of our attachment system, our relational field. And if you want to learn more about that, I've made a whole playlist on videos about our attachment system, secure attachment, insecure attachment. So you can go watch those after you're done watching this video. When we think about which organs relate and are associated with our attachment system, we think about the adrenal and kidneys because they are the ones that respond to comfort and safety and fear and threat. As I explained in part one, the function, the distribution, like the Amazon packages of those hormones in our body that tell us we're safe, we can relax, we can melt into you know, our seat and this interaction, or I need to be on guard, um, this person might want something from me that I'm not willing to give to them. Our kidneys tend to really enjoy good company, non-demanding, safe enough, friendly, enjoyable, easy company. And that will be different depending on the individual's history, stress levels, and culturally as well. When it comes to the relational aspect of kidney and adrenals, a common thing that I see often and have of course experienced myself is that when we are suppressing emotions, <clears throat> suppressing emotions within a relational context, whether um, it's within a romantic context or maybe with a friend that's a roommate and there's some tension there and maybe there's a boundary that needs to be set and expressed, but I'm holding it in, that suppression of emotion and um, kind of holding in will create extra stress in my body. So where is that felt? That's felt in the kidney and adrenals. So if you've ever had that chronic, dull, lower back pain, mid back pain, that's where our adrenal and kidneys are, then uh, that's a sign, the body saying, hey, maybe it's time to check in. There's some suppressed emotions going on here. And sometimes we can do that alone if we've learned how to do that. Other times we need a friend. Other times we need professional guidance to learn these things that most of us didn't learn in childhood or growing up. Most of the time, the reason why we suppress emotions in relationships is because we don't feel safe enough to express how we feel when we feel it and that we won't be rejected or judged or put down, made fun of for it. So it comes back to safety. As I mentioned earlier, our kidney and adrenals are the organs in our body associated with fear, danger and threat, and safety and comfort. So if I don't feel safe enough to express a boundary, to express crying or grief, even asking for help, sadness, crying, then the adrenals will need to work harder because essentially I feel unsafe within the relational context. And that could be in a romantic relationship. It could be, you know, as a child growing up, there wasn't a safe container within the household. It could be in any relational context. Part three, stress physiology. How our bodies, our beings process stress, the physical action of it. So like I mentioned before, like Amazon and those distribution centers, it's a physical action of the brain and adrenals saying we need to produce this hormone chemical because we're feeling enjoyment and safety or neutrality, then we don't um, secrete any hormones. That's where we want to be most of the time. Or in a stress response where we'll secrete those stress chemicals. That's the physical action the stress physiology of our bodies. So I find it very interesting that there's been more studies done on the stress hormones and the stress chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline rather than the feel-good hormones like oxytocin, serotonin, these feel-good chemicals. And that just shows, in my opinion, of course, where we are at in our world that there's this unspoken pandemic of adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout happening that 
we are trying to figure out by doing this so much research on the stress chemicals, yet we haven't really figured out on a global scale of how to um, essentially put our bodies and beings into a safe state so that our physiology can come down from that alertness, com can come down from that stress uh, response or that stressful state. So basically, stress ph physiology is alertness physiology. It's how alert do I need to be in this moment, in this relationship, um, in order to stay safe. And this is the work of the adrenal and the kidneys. Furthermore, there are studies that have been done on individuals that have complex trauma histories who are not alcoholics, and the studies have been done on these individuals' livers, and the livers present like that of someone that has been an alcoholic for years, which I find very fascinating because the liver will need to do the work that the kidney and adrenals cannot. I'm gonna say that again. If the kidney and adrenals are working overtime because they're stuck in a chronic stress response, which creates adrenal fatigue and burnout, then they won't be doing other jobs like filtering the blood. So the liver needs to step up to the plate and do that work. So in these studies, they've actually shown that the livers of people with complex trauma histories who have been living in that adrenalized or shut down conservation mode state, their livers appear like they've been alcoholics for years. To close out this part three of stress physiology, let's talk about adrenaline, noradrenaline. This is the fastest acting stress chemical out of cortisol and adrenaline. Adrenaline is fast acting. It's supposed to shoot out into the system created by the adrenals, distributed by the kidneys through the bloodstream in about eight to 10 minutes, short, fast acting. If you hear about those courageous acts of firefighters or moms running on the street to lift a car off their kid, this is adrenaline. It gets us moving, mobilizes us into action, makes our muscles be able to do wild feats. And it's meant to distribute through the system and then stop. So if you're someone that you find yourself being scared often or thinking about scary things a lot, sometimes in the work I do, we call it, I think Kathy Kane first came up with this um, kind of saying is stop it therapy. Doing stop it therapy of when we have a thought of even if it's I'm not good enough, which we've all had this thought, we have to do stop it therapy on ourselves because those adrenal and kidneys, if we don't stop it, they're gonna go wild and keep shooting out these chemical cocktails. So stop it therapy is something that I always teach in my programs and in my one-on-one -on -one work because it really works in helping recalibrate this stress physiology. Cortisol, on the other hand, is a longer acting alertness chemical hormone that our adrenal and parts of our brain produce and distribute and it has uh, more of a 24-hour cycle and um, if it's on all the time we're going to feel anxious and have this hyper vigilance we're going to be functioning in higher energy states our sleep might be disturbed if we have low cortisol levels we may be sluggish all the time exhausted not have energy to get out of bed sometimes. This is when our cortisol is on the lower end of the spectrum. Ideally, we want our cortisol levels to be highest in the a.m. and lower in the evening. That's a, a normal rhythm of cortisol um, excretion. We need cortisol and adrenaline and all these um, stress hormones to do basic things. However, the problem is, is when they get spiked and they get stuck on when we're living in constant survival or adrenaline mode, then this chemical cocktail gets, basically wreaks havoc in our system. It's like this, these chemicals that are supposed to be fast acting, 8 to 10 minutes, 24 hours, they will be on 24-7. And they're in our bloodstream floating around and basically telling our system we're unsafe all the time, and this over a prolonged period of time creates adrenal fatigue, burnout, and eventually chronic health issues. 
which if you want to learn more about that, make sure you check out the other videos on my channel where I talk about the relationship between stress and chronic health issues. That wraps up today's video, the practical everyday things you need to know about your adrenal glands. And I hope you learned something new in this video. If you'd like to dive deeper and learn how to chat and connect with your adrenals or recover from adrenal fatigue and burnout, make sure you go on over to my website. I have self-study programs, intensives, and also private sessions available. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Take good care.